so now let us see how do we do that. So let us say I have this is my R 1 and this is your 1 x device I will call it Q 1. So, this is giving me V B E 1 I need one more voltage V B 2. So, let us have one more diode. V B 2. So, I want to generate the current in this resistor if this is R 2 to be delta V B by R. So, which means this voltage should be V B 1. If I make this is V B 1 then what would happen? the current which is which will flow into this device is delta V B by R 2 correct. And now I know so go to the previous case I know this current this is V B 1 current flowing in this device is delta V B by R 2 and if I add another resistor R 1 what should be this voltage? band gap voltage correct. How can I make this uh, I cannot directly short this V B 1 to this V B 1. So, how can I make this same as V B 1 this note. Yeah, so, you just had a op amp and you with the virtual short uh, property you will get that two voltages same. how to find the sign ok. So, lot of you do not know actually. So, in order to find the negative feedback or find the sign of. So, if the sign is given you can tell whether it is a negative feedback or positive or if it sign is not given and you are asked to put the sign based on negative feedback then you can find that. So, what you need to do at the output give the test signal and move around the feedback and see what feedback is doing whether it is moving in the moving your output in the same direction or basically test signal or opposite. If it is a negative feedback it will try to oppose the variation in the output. So, if I let us say increase this voltage now move around this what would happen. So, if this is changing this both the voltages will change ok. So, and this is V B. So, if you look at the incremental change in the V B is very small because if you look at the characteristic of your diode or your bipolar your collector current is has exponential re relationship. So, if you change the current by large amount your V B will change with a very small amount, but in the other case the voltage is dire di directly proportional to your I R drop. So, you have a series resistor. So, any change here the current change will make a large change in the voltage compared to that which means if you increase this and if you make this positive if this is negative this is positive since you know this voltage will change more compared to this one. So, your output will further increase. So, this is creating a positive feedback which means this should be plus and this should be 
minus because if you make the change this negative will change more compared to positive input and it will try to oppose any change in the output and make your output stable okay so that's how you find any feedback system you can find that way without breaking the loop you can intuitively find that <coughs> okay and if you look at the circuit which i have drawn for linear regulators the reference is connected at negative uh, and feedback is positive the reason is you have a p mos at the output so that's a have another inverting stage and you have to flip the input to make it negative feedback so what will be your output voltage vbg equal to vb1 plus r1 by r2 delta vb is what correct if this is m times that is 1x so your q2 is m times of q1 the area when i say area it's basically the emitter area okay so now what is your k factor is r1 by r2 i can define it uh, this as a vb1 plus alpha vt where alpha is r1 by r2 into vt and what is the condition for band gap delta vbg by delta v t should be 0 which means delta v b 1 over delta v t should be equal to what minus alpha delta v t over delta t which will be nothing but k by q and we calculated that how much was eighty six micro volt per k that was delta B T and you have alpha here I will just add correct calculate the alpha 23. and delta v b e by delta t was how much minus 1.5 millivolt to mi minus 2 mm -hmm. millivolt per kelvin so let's start with uh, minus 1.5 okay we'll do the same for minus 2 also and we'll see the range so what is your alpha 17.437 can you calculate the m from here sorry r1 by r2 into ln m equal to 17.437 if let us say m equal to mo you most of the time we keep it 10 so how much is ln 10 2.3 so r1 by r2 should be how much 17.437 divided by ln m how much 7.5 so this is the ratio you require 
So, the ratio is more important here not the absolute value. So, ratio will set your coefficient or the slope of your basically uh, pitted voltage and the value will define what absolute value will do here. I can arbitrarily I can choose any resistor like 10 ohm somebody chooses 10 ohm somebody 1 kilo somebody 100 kilo what difference it will make hmm? current ah? so you do not want to burn lot of current uh, because this current will be drawn from your op amp is connected to the output of your op amp. So, if you make let us say order of even 1 kilo ohm total resistance series resistor then your uh, current required might be order of milliamps uh, which is pretty huge usually these band gaps are built using tens of micro amp. So, you will be choosing 100 k 50 k kind of numbers here. So, if R 1 equal to let us say 50 kilo ohm then R 2 will be 7.5 times of 5 how much is that? Let us simplify it make it 100 k. So, okay. correct. So, your current will be very low. So, this is R 2 and this is R 1 correct. So, what if what was the V B G? V B G at room temperature. So, V B G equal to V B E plus what did you have alpha V T correct. So, how much is the V T? V B is you know 0 0.7 volt plus 17.43 multiplied by 26 millivolt. Huh? How much is that? Hmm? No, that is not correct. Seventeen point four three. 0.453 okay alpha v t because v t is at room temperature 26 millivolt. So, 26 millivolt multiplied by 17.43 and this plus 0.7 1.15 yeah, approximately 1.15 volt. Okay, now choose delta V B or delta T equal to minus 2. Okay. So, from this what will be your alpha? what would be your alpha minus 2 millivolt sorry divided by how much uh, 86 micro volt 23 point hmm? 23 point ok just make it 23. So, now V B G will be again V B E plus 23 times V T. So, 26 multiplied by 23 equal to 0 0.7 plus roughly 0 0.6 volt. Okay. Uh, this is 0 0.5 
0.0598 which makes it 1.3 volt. So, your VBG is 1.15 volt to 1.3 volt for delta V B by delta T equal to minus 1.5 milli volt per K to and depending on the process you might hit any number in between these. So, different process and most of the time you get 1.25, 1.2 volt okay. and this is very close to your. So, at room temperature your uh, band gap energy of silicon is 1.12 volt and at room temperature you are getting 1.15 volt which is very close to your band gap energy 1.12 EV actually electron volt you get and uh, that is why we call it band gap reference because the voltage you get is very close to the band gap energy. So, this is your band gap. So, the gist of the band gap here is what you need P tat and C tat and uh, C tat is uh, mostly built using V B. So, you just use 0.7 volt there and then you scaled the V T or delta V B uh, by simply connecting a resistor and flowing a V B by delta V B by R current into that and you can uh, scale those number and you can match the coefficients or slope of the your V B and delta V B and cancel them and you get and uh, so that was just just uh, one topology and you can build a numerous topologies as long as you know how to build a C tat and how to build a P tat all you need to just add the two after scaling them and you can build like tens of uh, topologies of band gap ok. That is why I mean if you just google you will find a numerous topologies of band gap. So, it is not important like how you build it the most important thing is you get a most accurate reference current. You can do it without op amp also, but it will have a little bit uh, more inaccuracy compared to op amp because op amp has a negative feedback. So, it ensures the that these two branches have the same current but if you do not have a op amp then those currents may not match and you will get some nonlinearity behavior in the output and that will introduce inaccuracy in the. So, if you are not concerned about uh, um, very accurate band gap and you want a roughly may be crude band gap then you can do without op amp and you can save the current as well as area in your uh, band gap circuit. So, it all depends uh, what you require. Okay, so, let us look at uh, another topology of uh, same band gap.
okay, again the same thing. So, this is op amp with the negative feedback. So, these two voltages will be same. So, in order to have the same current in these two bipolars, you need to have these resistors are should be same. So, if I let us say I call it R 3, this also should be R 3, correct. If you have a different then current will change and uh, in order to have a delta B B equal to B T L and M, you have to make sure that you have the same current. So, that the M factor is only coming from your reverse saturation current. Okay. Now, let us look at this. If this is 1 x device and this is uh, again choose 10 x the same numbers which we had uh, in the previous case. This is q 1 and this is q 2. So, now just apply simple k v l and see what would happen. What is, what is this voltage? So, if this is your V out, what is this voltage? V out minus V B 2, okay. what is this voltage? V out minus V B 1. So, what is the current flowing into this resistor? Delta V B by R 1. So, let us make this R 2 and this is R 1, so that we get the same equation what we had previously. So, what is this voltage now? What is this voltage? Delta V B by R 2 into, is this correct? Currents are same, huh? so 2 x current is flowing. So, correct. So, your V out is, is nothing but your band gap voltage, which is V B 2 plus twice of delta V B over R 2 into R 1. So, the only difference is, so if you choose the 10 x here, the value which required for your uh, ratio of R 1 R 2 will be half here, because you have a 2 x component. Okay, otherwise, rest of the things are same and these are R, R, R 3 and R 2 can be replaced with the current sources also. So, if you as long as they are same, okay. so you have a MOSFET in the saturation bias it with the fixed. So, you have a current mirror basically and since uh, this op amp will ensure that V d s of those two devices are same. So, channel length modulation will not get effect and you will always get a same current exact same current. So, or you can use resistor or And this is called, anybody knows the name for this particular band gap? Okay. This is named after the guy who implemented this, that is. So, if you build any new topology, you can name it after your name. So, before I continue with the same, I would like to just uh, fix one typo here. So, okay. because the reason is this voltage should be higher 
and the bottom side of R2 should be lower and u max 10x so that v out minus v b will be larger for this and now you have to flip the polarity of this to make it negative feedback. Okay. 